I love our church family. You guys rock. I love our 1030 congregation. You are awesome. And I'm so excited for what Jesus is doing in and through us collectively and hearing back some of the stories that I've been hearing about what he's been doing in your lives is just, yeah, it's just beautiful to behold. And so we're going to hear a few more of some stories today about what he's been doing in some of our life groups as we celebrate 40 days of prayer, finish officially finishing, and as we look ahead to Easter because today is Palm Sunday, as David said. And uh, But we're starting a brand new series today, and I could talk about this topic for eternity really because really it's speaking about who Jesus is and what he's done for us and so we're starting a series called Amazing Grace and we're kicking off this series because our Easter service is a part of it and then we've got a follow-up service after Easter called The Stories Continues about stories of transformation about the two men on the road to Emmaus and how they met Christ and their lives were transformed and um So I'm kicking off this first message, but it's really to prepare our hearts and to also open our eyes, I believe, to what God wants to do from here on through to the rest of this year, because 40 days of prayer isn't finished per se. It's a launching pad into what God wants to do and through us for Easter and for the rest of this year. So uh, I've got two parts to my message this morning. The first one that I felt God really put on my heart and we sang about, you know, all my affection, all my devotion poured out to you, Jesus, on the, poured out on the feet of Jesus. We talked about pouring out our love and affection. Well, do you know, God's grace has been poured out. We pour out our love and affection because he loves us and because he loves us extravagantly and he loves us unreservedly and he loves us unconditionally and so we pour out our love for him in response to him pouring out his life for us it's pretty awesome and you know our world is so hungry for grace our world is so hungry for grace grace is God's free unmerited favor his free unearned kindness Our world is desperate. They might even not know what what it is that they're looking for, but desperate for God's grace. Grace that will tell us the truth about ourselves. Grace that will expose our self-interest, our pride and our longing to belong. (laughs) Yet a grace that will still choose to welcome us with undeserved kindness. You know, we were made for that. Whether we recognize or realize it, whether you're here today and you recognize or realize it or not, but there's a longing deep within us for God's undeserved kindness. And in the biblical reality of grace is far better than we think. It's far better than we think. It's far bigger. It's far greater than we can imagine. If you're bored in your Christian faith, take again, take another look again at the grace of God. Because when you look afresh on the grace of God, you will actually start to grow in a sense of gratitude and wonder and awe of who God is, that He should be so kind to you. And we never graduate from our need for God's grace. We can never outgrow it. We can never outrun it. It is relentless in its pursuit of us because that's who God is. He loves us. And John chapter 1 speaks of Jesus who's full of grace and truth. In John 1.14 it says, The Word became flesh, became human and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Do you know throughout this 40 days of prayer spiritual growth campaign, Some of us have come to know the Father in a deeper way. Am I right? Yeah. Or perhaps intimately for the first time. This Father, our Father, Jesus' Father and our Father. Jesus' Father and our Father. That's amazing. Sent His Son full of grace and truth into a world that didn't even recognize how much it needed it. 
Often we forget our need, our desperate need for the grace of God. You know, it's not just a ticket to heaven where we get saved by God's grace and then we're all on our own. We are not just saved by the grace of God. We are sustained by the grace of God. We desperately need Jesus in our life. John 1.14a, a different translation says, So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. Throughout our 40 days of prayer campaign, many of us have experienced this unfailing love and faithfulness of God, perhaps for the first time or perhaps in a deeper way. As we're learning to get up with gratitude, (laughs) to bless God's name and worship him for who he is, not just what he gives We see more clearly all throughout our days and our lives how he has been and how we sang about this morning, how he he is so, so good. Do you know, two weeks ago, it was 20 years since I walked into this church and watched an Easter presentation and heard the gospel and gave my life to Christ. And I just think of all that the Lord has packed into those 20 (laughs) years and how he's grown me, and how he's changed me, and how he's continually remained faithful to me, and how he's never let me down. Even though some things have happened differently than how I would have planned, or I would have imagined, we can rely on his unfailing love, and his faithfulness towards us. We can stake our very lives on these characteristics of God. And this is for some of you today. For how he acts and what he does is backed up by who he is. When you look at the cross and you see grace poured out, Jesus giving his life, laying down his life for you, that's who God is. When when it says we have seen his glory, that's when we've seen the magnificence of God, his love and his power perfectly displayed and his wisdom when grace was poured out for you and for me. In John 1, 14, I'm just, this verse has been in my heart this week and here's another translation. It says in the um, next one, the word became a human being and lived here with us. The Word, the one who created the heavens and the earth, became a human being and lived here with us. We saw his true glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. I love this. From him, all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. From him, all the kindness of God and all the truth of God has come down to you. That's amazing. Because you and I know we don't deserve that, right? From him, from Jesus, all the kindness, not just part of it, all of it, and all the truth of God has come down to you, is available to you. From Jesus. (laughs) The message of grace is that we can't earn enough or do enough to get ourselves up to God. And he knew that. That's why he came down. To us. The good news of grace is that from Jesus and Jesus alone, all the kindness and all the truth of God have, that's past tense, have come down. It's not like we have to do anything more to earn it. <laughs> all the kindness and all the truth have come down to us. Jesus, fully God and fully man, is all the kindness and all the truth of God revealed. If you want to know what God is like, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And when ultimately we see him on the cross, we see the Father who gave his son for us. Jesus, fully God and fully man, fully man all of the kindness and all the truth of God, we can have him. <laughs> That's the message of grace. We can have him. We can have a relationship with him. We can have the fullness and the kindness of God <laughs> and the truth of God. When we have Jesus, we have that. We can receive God's free, unmerited kindness and know the one 
who is reality. Know the one who is love, who is eternal life himself. When we receive Jesus personally and put our trust in him, we place our whole life into his hands. Guess what happens? Grace has come down to us. Grace has been poured out to us. And grace is not just God's love poured out, but it's God's riches, the riches of all that Jesus won for us at Christ's expense. It cost Jesus something to pour out his grace. It cost him something to give his life for you and for me. It cost him his very life. There is one who so loved you. Yes, he so loved the world, but he so loves you. And he so loved you that he sent his one and only son so that whoever, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what family you've come from. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter what you think disqualifies you. God's grace has been put out and you can receive it and know him personally. Whoever believes will not perish, will not be rejected and disowned by God. Because in this life, (laughs) we received his free gift, his free offer. We recognized the truth and said, I believe in you, Jesus, because you are truth. And I receive your free gift of forgiveness and eternal life. Will not perish, but will have eternal life. Will have Jesus forever and life with Him forever. And that's what eternal life is. Eternal life is not some mystical place. Eternal life is being with God and in His presence and eternally with Him and Jesus Christ forever. This is eternal life, the Bible says, that you may know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom He sent. If we have Jesus living in us, we know God. To know the only true God is only possible if we know the one whom he has sent. Do you know him today? Do you know him today? Because he loves you. He's done everything necessary and everything possible for you to come to know him today. And you can receive him. You can reach out and say thank you and receive the gift that he's given and take, it, take him into your life and say, yes, I believe upon you. Throughout 40 days of prayer, we've been reminded that Jesus came to make it possible for us to be adopted into God's family and become his child. Now, anyone who has Christ living in them by his spirit can cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, the most intimate of relationships. Knowing Jesus personally means we are in a rock solid, unbreakable, always and forever relationship with God. We can know and enjoy and experience this one true God as Father. That's amazing. That's amazing grace. That's just not mediocre grace. That's not just average, yeah, I'll take it or leave it grace. That's amazing grace. <laughs> We can tell him what we really think, how we really feel and what we really want in prayer. And as our perfect daddy, he won't give us everything we ask for because some of what we ask for, he knows is not good for us. We think it's great. We think it's awesome. But he says, no, my son, my daughter, I've got something even better. You can't see it now, but I have. And you can trust me because I laid down my life for you. That's how much I love you and are committed to you. Some of what we ask for comes from a wrong motive. And sometimes even though we can't see it when we're suffering, we don't understand why he says no or not yet, we can know that he has something better in mind. Because he's a God of all grace. In John 1.14, he's another version, paraphrase in the message. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood. Isn't that cool? We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Imagine if someone said that about you. That's like God's business card. Generous inside and out, true from start to finish. That's awesome. Do you know, the world is hungry for grace, for this lived out generosity, for this generosity of heart, this generosity of spirit, this generosity and provision that we can't, 
wrap our minds around. We can't even sometimes understand why God would choose to do it, but we just receive it. (laughs) And we're blown away by his amazing grace. The world is hungry for truth, authentic meaning and purpose in a world full of options and deceptions. Young people, your friends want something that is real and so clarifying that it's breathtaking. They have been told a lie that there's nothing in this world that they can guarantee. Nothing's true. Nothing lasts. Everything's your choice. That's what the lie that young people grow up with today. But there's someone who is so true and so real. There's someone we were made for and we will purpose for and we will design for. And when your friends look at you and see something different about you, it's because they're hungry for God's grace. They're hungry for a place to belong. They're hungry for kindness. Jesus, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Many of us have seen and tasted his goodness in our lives. Many of us in this room have experienced his grace put out. We have tasted what the world is starving for, the bread of life, the living water that never runs out and never runs dry. We continually experience his generosity in our lives inside and out, his true steadfastness from start to finish and every step in between. (laughs) We are eyewitnesses to his goodness, first-hand testifiers to his greatness and his faithfulness. Do you know, we have a story and we have a song, each of us, (laughs) that the world needs. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. That's your story, that's my story. You might not use those words, but that's what he's done in your life. You have a song and a story your friends need to hear. Your neighbours desperately need to know for themselves. It's a song and a story that some of your family are not even looking for right now. Some are completely uninterested in it. Maybe they don't even know it's available to them. For some people that are on our hearts, this song and this story feels too out of reach. If people really knew what they had done and who they'd hurt and what they'd seen and what they thought, Well, they would agree. They're simply undeserving of God and anything good. But that's not what grace says. So we have a song of grace in our hearts. It's not the music. It's just this hope in our hearts, right? This song of grace in our hearts. And this story of grace of what Jesus is continually doing in our life and unfolding in our life, right? It's a song of hope that no matter what, hope will never fail. Jesus will always be with us. We're guaranteed of a life forever with him in heaven. It's a story of unfailing love and beauty and truth and undeserved kindness. It's a love that's truer and more real than anything we've ever known. (laughs) Jesus has given you a song. And he's writing his story in and through your life and mine by grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. (laughs) God's free, undeserved kindness. None of us deserve it, but God did it anyway. None of us can earn it, but God won it for us anyway. God's riches poured out. From Jesus, all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down. For from his blood that was shed for us, from his body that was disfigured and crushed with our sin, from his perfect record of obedience before the Father that he gives to anyone who receives him, from his willingness to lay down his life and from his resurrection power now available to us, we can receive God's riches poured out, God's grace poured out, I want you to hear me this morning if you hear nothing else. The people that God has placed in your life are starving for grace. They're starving for grace. They're hungry for hope. 
They're searching for truth in a world of contradictions and confusion. Your song is your life example of worship, worshipping and trusting in Jesus no matter what. And when they look at you and when they see you, despite suffering or despite going through hardship, and they think, wow, why would you believe in God if you went through that? And they see you still holding on to him. That speaks of something that they want to taste and see for themselves. Something that can't be snatched away from us. Your story, your willingness to speak about what he's done and is doing in your life and your invitation for people to taste what you've tasted and experience what you now enjoy. When we live our life as a song of worship to God, when we are ready with a, with a story and a a reason for hope to be able to share about what Jesus has done in our life. People in our life glimpse the grace of God at work. Do you know 40 days of prayer has been a time of renewal (laughs) for us as a church, hasn't it? It's been a time of blowing away some cobwebs, shedding some religious practices perhaps. blowing away the dust and the cobwebs that have caused us to shelve our stories and calling us back to sing his song of grace and proclaim his greatness and rejoice in how good our God really is. But it doesn't end today, like I said before. (laughs) Today is a launching pad into what God is wanting to do in and through us for the rest of this year. I truly believe it. I can taste it. I can smell it. I can see it by faith. He wants our songs and our stories to go viral. Do you know what going viral is? On YouTube, if a video is liked by more than 5 million people, it's called going viral. It happens usually really quickly. People, marketers have tried to pinpoint the strategies for making a video go viral and they can't. Because there's all these intangible factors, (laughs) the right timing, Uh, just the right demographic or something that's really pertinent to what's happening in culture. Someone will make a video or make a comment or capture something and then all these people start sharing it and and sharing it and sharing it on social media with their friends and all of a sudden you have this video that's gone viral and all these people are talking about it. Have you seen that? Yeah, that's hilarious. You've got to watch it. God wants our stories and our song to go viral. To where people go, mate, I was talking to Nathan the other day and he told me something that God's been, this, God's been doing in his life. It's like pretty unbelievable. Can't believe that happened. Have you noticed a change in him? <laughs> Just picking on him. <laughs> right? And people start talking about it and talking about it and talking about this, this buzz and this sense of how awesome would that be? He wants us to go to the people who need to hear and need to get a glimpse of God's grace and invite them to taste and see his goodness for themselves. And so we're going to hear some stories today about some goodness, the goodness of God through our life groups. And I'd like Jean and Peter and Mike (laughs) to come forward, please. Why don't you put your hands together as they're going to come and share. Come on down. All right, I've given them strict instructions. Brief, keep it brief, as I'll wrestle the mic off you, I promise. (laughs) All right, I'm going to start with Mike. Come over here, you can stand over here. Where have you seen the grace of God at work in your life group? Thanks, Gus. Um, I think the first thing for me for uh, 40 days of prayer is, uh, as a home group leader, the the quality of material put together by Rick Warren and and the book has just been a blessing for us because we've had such good quality teaching and and good structure to work with that it's made our job as life group leaders very very easy um the the things that we've seen I suppose we've uh, Tracy and I've run a home group for two years or more now and we had a good core of people, about 12 people. 
And as a result of the 40 days of prayer, we saw about another six or seven people come and join our group, which has been a real blessing. And they've really connected with us. The format of our group is that we we meet from 6 to 6.30 and have a meal together. So it's good relaxing time at the end of the day. Everybody gets fed, has a chat, has a cup of tea. Yeah. As you can tell. <laughs> and 7.30, we, we start the uh, the presentation by Rick Warren, which is just fantastic. And then because of the size of our group now, we've actually split. After the presentation by Rick, we actually split up into two groups. We've got enough guys and girls where we can go to another part of the house and all the guys get together and share. And so I'll speak on behalf of all the guys. Um, we... Uh, have had some great sessions and for the purpose of confidentiality I can't sort of go into detail as to what's been going on but you know we've just seen such such specific things that Rick has, has pointed out and then as a result of the discussions afterwards you can just see that, that God's unlocking things in people's lives and that is so exciting to see um, but we you know from a from a life group point of view, we've also seen um, a lot of things happen over a longer period of time where, you know, we, I'm expecting in the next few months that we're going to see some fantastic uh, testimonies from some of the people in their home group of what God's been doing. So they're, they're still on a journey at the moment, but it's exciting to see. And I know Mike also shared, you can stay up here, also shared with me um, how God's just been helping you in your own walk with him, deepening and giving you some real practical tools about how to grow in your prayer life and how to deepen your prayer life as well, which has been awesome. Um, So yeah, so good when groups have to subgroup in a home. I think you guys are going to be a life group planning life group, a church planning church, life group planning life group. Come on. All right, Peter. (laughs) <laughs> well, glory of God. God is good. Amen. When I said uh, yes to lead uh, a life group of wonderful people, my life changed. It's no longer the same again. Because that's why he says, follow me. I will make you the fishers of men. You know, my life, is, I've been walking in more grace and power. And uh, what I've realized is uh, when you step out in faith, that's when you see the glory of God. Uh, I've been hearing powerful testimonies from wonderful people of our group. I said, wow, God, you are God. God, you are God. And uh, boldly, on behalf of my life group, I would say what our senior pastor promised us before we start our life group. My life group has seen it all. He said, you are going to experience spiritual revival. You are going to experience victory over opposition. You are going to experience spiritual maturity. You are going to experience answered prayers. Oh, yes. Our life group experienced that. Oh, yes. Can I ask you a question? Because I know you could keep going. You're just warming up. (laughs) Man, we could listen to him all day, right? Um, When I spoke to one of your life group members and I said, how's your life group going? I won't say who that is, but they go to me, I love them. And they're talking about Peter and Precious. And I just, it just made my heart so happy because you are such, you embody the welcoming kindness of God, both you and Precious. And I'm so thrilled that you've stepped into becoming life group leaders. I'm so excited, excited for how God's going to grow your group and life group planning life group. And they've also joined our first impressions team. God's just doing awesome stuff for you. So put your hands together for Peter. Come back here. Mate, this lady is amazing. If you don't know Jean, you've got to go have a coffee and a conversation. Look at that. So many people. You're so loved, Jean. Also, both of you. Um, (laughs) 
Why don't you share with us about your group? Well, first of all, the, um, I learned the verse many years ago. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. And this verse was particularly brought back to me um, a few weeks ago when that verse was one of the verses that we were to look through for that day. And even though the home group had begun on a little while, I thought, yes, years ago when I learned that verse off by heart, I was so desperately seeking the face of God. But somehow, through my prayers and through many prayers every day, I had forgot to actually humbly as that verse says, humbly to seek his face. So I started doing that. Then I had a fall a few weeks ago through the home group, just before the home group people arrived. I got fell between two chairs off a chair and I was okay. I went to see a specialist um, myself and asked about um, this, I found it hard to swallow. And um, the specialist that's here today sent me down to the hospital to get a um, barium swallow test everything came out completely clear. And, and I believe with all my heart that that's because it's just not a prayer saying, God, heal me. It's saying, I humbly come to you, Lord. I ask you to forgive me my sins, and I'm seeking you, seeking you, seeking you to heal me, Lord. And this has been a wonderful time through this 40 days. If nothing else, I thank God for that. But for the people in the home group, um, we divided into three lots as well. John Devine and David Oakley uh, took um, two of the other groups. And as I was asking the people what they got out of the group, one lady said that she carried a lot of burdens. She came into the group with a lot of burdens. And she said as she was seeking God, she'd give all those burdens over to him. Those burdens were taken away. Another lady had a vertigo a couple of weeks ago. And apparently, I don't know too much medically about a vertigo, but apparently it takes months sometimes, sometimes years for vertigo to go. She's in Melbourne at the minute at a wedding. Vertigo is practically gone. Maybe it's gone completely now because I haven't spoken to her for a few days. Another miracle. A lot of people in the group also, they have found that they uh, are able more to communicate with their loved ones that they couldn't before because they have sought God and God has given them the ability to speak to people that they weren't able to speak to before. Um, one particular lady uh, went to the hospital a couple of weeks ago. Her brother was dying and she didn't know uh, whether he was a Christian and she is not a lady that boldly speaks out in any way. As a matter of fact, she's very, very shy. But in the hospital, she just straight away, I was with her, and she straight away said to him, are you a Christian? And he said, yes. And she said, but do you know Jesus Christ as your personal savior? And he said, yes. He passed away yesterday, or Friday night, sorry, he passed away. But the peace, you know, God just doesn't give us the, the, our salvation. He gives us peace and the joy that this lady has experienced through that experience is absolutely second to none. I've asked a lot of people in the home group what they got out of the 40 days or the, the 40 days of purpose group. And the majority of them said they got a closer walk with God, a closer relationship with God. And like me, they're seeking God. And I thank God for the 40 days of um, prayer as well, because a lot of people in the group that I have personally led have spoken up about their joys and their sorrows. And I think every day when you know that your whole group is praying for you by name, that gives you great comfort. I have lost five people in the last five weeks. Uh, people have passed away that I have known, two family members, three others in the past five weeks. But there's that comfort to know that not only are you praying for God's comfort in your life, but that your whole group is praying for God's comfort in your life. And I thank, I thank Rick Warren, pers personally, I'll thank Rick Warren, for the assurance to know that other people are praying for you because it certainly strengthens you on a daily basis. I've got a lot more here, but I'm not allowed. Mate, you gotta go see Jean. I was talking to her yesterday and she's like, I'm just getting started. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. You guys can take your seats. Thank you so much for sharing.
Mate, it's just a little glimpse of some of the things of what God does. I want us to respond. Come on up, music team. You know, we've, we've, we've talked about the grace of God. We've talked about how he's so good. We've talked about God bringing us back to our song and bringing us back to wanting to share our story and, and actually uh, having our song and our story go viral. Well, it starts with worship of God and acknowledging who he is and, and thanking him, you know, thanking him with all of our hearts. Yes, for the answered prayers, but just thanking him that he is all of the kindness of God and all of the truth of God come down to us. So can we stand to our feet? We're going to worship him.